So I will start off by introducing the panel to you. Can everyone hear me at the back? It's okay? Perfect. Okay, so first up we've got Victoria as our speaker guest. Victoria, would you like to explain in 30 seconds who you are? Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you Startup Grind uh, Cyprus for inviting me and for um, deciding to do this uh, panel because it's a, 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 a close, very close to my heart. Uh, so I have few hats and, as I said, missions, goals in the air. Um, I still continue in corporate environment, so I lead a uh, diversified holding in Cyprus as a GM, uh, active in banking, agribusiness, properties, investments, and so on. Um, I also have my entrepreneurship stint, uh, so I've set up these ventures, a boutique advisory, uh, a few years back uh, to capture my advising scopes to multinationals and start uh, scale-ups looking to do business out of Cyprus. Um, I also have a community called Intensity, International Enterprise and Community, and I'm very pleased that these ladies next to me um, are actually our members because it's, uh, the, the mission is to have a gender balanced uh, community of female and male um, founders or wannabe founders and make the Cypriot startup ecosystem a little bit more exciting. Amazing. Thank you very much. And we have Maria, who is the founder of Heroes Made. Would you like to explain in 30 seconds a little bit about yourself? Sure. Mm. How to follow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a mother, mentor, and writer. And um, recently we just started and the uh, company is about social emotional learning for elementary schools. And uh, I'll be doing that. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Thank you. And then we've got Pauline who is the founder of Swift Shift Coaching Consulting Consultancy. Hi everyone, glad to see you all here. It's very nice. I'm Pauline, as you can see. I'm a Lebanese Cypriot. I'm the founder of Swift Shift Coaching and Consultancy. What do I do? I work with people and businesses who are successful and want to go to their next level, so they go to the peak. I have an academy for coach training and training as well and capacity building is accredited all around the world. And another passion that I have is this. I'm a single mom of a teenager who's 16. I work with teens as well to teach them the social skills that are not taught at schools, that are lacking with our teens, so, uh, and they need them. And especially after the pandemic, they need them more than ever. So uh, this is, these are the two hats that I have, and I'm glad to have you all here. Amazing, thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to start. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So the first thing is actually focused upon the question we thought we'd come up with for you. And this is about the uh, most significant challenges um, during business and the kind of lack of confidence that maybe women have in the space of business. So yes. the question is how, you know, how have you got over that or maybe not gotten over that or gotten through it? Definitely. Effectively, it's not lack of self-confidence that people have. It's lack of self-esteem because uh, self-confidence and self-esteem are totally different things. So self-confidence is what we show to people. So I might show myself as very self-confident person, but when I look at myself on, in the middle, on my own, I relate a totally different message. And I think what we struggle with is keeping this perfect image to the world that we are strong, we don't cry, we are so powerful and everything. That creates this issue within us. I, I strongly believe that women are empowered. We don't need empowering, we are empowered. It's just that life happens and sometimes we lose this part that is inside of us and it makes us dip down as, as it's perfectly normal. And I don't think men don't suffer from that. I think it's a human behavior to suffer from dips in our self-esteem. Just men are better at covering their emotions because they they learn from their uh, really young age is don't cry, don't show your emotions, and this is why we struggle later because men, unfortunately, don't show their emotions and you become a single mom <laughs> and you get divorced. <laughs> so it's really, really, it is there and it's just you need to take it out and that's it. 
And you touched on kind of motherhood there, and I feel like we have a lot of social expectation when it comes to motherhood and life humans. It's the beliefs that we were raised on, and effectively those beliefs might not work well for us because we take the beliefs from a generation to another to another, and those beliefs were made a generation a long time ago that are no longer valid. What was valid at their age worked perfectly for them. But for us, we're a totally different world, and we just need to change it. And perhaps it kind of creates a sort of conflict. Do you have any advice? Definitely, it's just be authentic you. And uh, really, when you show up as your authentic you, and who you really believe you are, there's nothing that can stop you. It's just be you. And it's not about what you are told to do, it's what you feel you want to do that is important, not what you should do. So just ask yourself every day, what is it that I want today to make tomorrow the best for me? And when you are okay, everything is better. But it starts with you as a person. It doesn't start mm -hmm. as well. Framework. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so just two things. This about show, showing uh, vulnerability is um, actually pretty normal. Um, and at least, you know, like in the startup universe, um, you know how there's this, there's this thing about celebrating failures because failures actually mean that you have learned um, and, and you know that saying you never lose you only learn like if you build upon that um, actually you know like this is exactly exactly you know like where I believe you know Cyprus um, could put the focus more um, to celebrate failures because they mean they mean new beginnings. Right, so, uh, and also it increases that kind of like risk appetite as well, because this is, I think, what we are lacking. And the other thing I wanted to build upon, uh, it was this point about um, actually, you know, like that the framework needs to be revisited. You know, like it's outdated, it doesn't suit, especially, you know, like single parent, you know, like families, divorced kind of families, even, you know, like, uh, I mean, our, you know, like any family is kind of like challenged to kind of, balance, work, you know, business, um, family life, um, and, and so on. So I believe that more needs to be done to, to actually um, uh, support female entrepreneurship uh, is actually to take a look whether the system, the framework is fit for purpose. Currently it's not. You know, it, it's, putting, it's putting a huge burden, especially on women. Um, you know, like how are they going to manage to kind of, you know, cook, bring the kids, you know, from school, uh, home, um, attend to their, you know, like work, but at the same time drive kids all over the place, you know, so it, it, it is a challenge. And especially in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Especially in Cyprus. Especially Every, in Cyprus. It's everywhere, I yeah. think. It's not only in Cyprus, it's everywhere that this is the picture that you, the mother needs to take care of all this, whereas it should be taken care of by both parties, they in a partnership, not in a single side of relationship. So this is for business as well. And you feel like perfectionism, perfectionism has a role in that. Do you think it's essential as a woman? We feel like we need to perfect everything. If we're juggling so many things and so many tasks that we have in a day, is this something that you feel we need to fulfill? I would, I would say it, it perhaps plays a role, but at the same time, again, it's, it's showing the vulnerability. It's also asking for help delegating, wanting to kind of like empower others to, to kind of chip in, you know, like with their time or effort, even if that, that's, you know, to do the errands with the kids or to stay with them for an hour or two while you have a meeting. So it just, again, it's about, you know, being kind of like human and expecting others, you know, like to, to kind of embrace that. So let's put it that way. Plugging into kind of the community and kind of identifying your tribe. 
perhaps our community intensity is the one for you because you will feel that you have, I don't know, currently maybe we're close to 80 members, you know, we cheer for each other, we support each other, we, you know, try to put each other in the loop on opportunities, events, happenings, you know, like because it's all about continuing to kind of, you know, grow your professional and personal portfolio kind of like of uh, contacts. Um, only, I believe, through networking and supporting, you know, like each other within, you know, this community, we can succeed as an ecosystem and as individuals. Why, you know, like you referred to London, you know, you were feeling respected. Just because, you know, London is like the number one ecosystem in Europe. Perhaps not, you know, in the world, you know, how you have China and Silicon Valley and then London is the leader in, in Europe. But there, you know, they, they have, have it developed. In Cyprus, we actually need to develop it. And coming from, I've been here for the past three years on the outdoor house period. And I think one advice I could give is join all the communities that you can and then see which one fits you. Mm -hmm. Because you might be joining communities that are very well, but then you might not align with the values or you might align with this. So find your tribe, as uh, we said, it's very important that you try it out. No perfect community is perfect for everybody at the end of the day. You can be a member of many. And try the ones that suit you the most and you find yourself that yes, this is the kind of people I want to surround with because definitely your network is the most important and having people supporting you and showing up for your events and saying go and do it, especially when you come, I'm half separate as well and I don't speak very well really, so it's, my, it's one of the disadvantages. So you feel I, I understand but I cannot communicate very well. So do, do interact with people, as many people as you can. Get out of there, get out of your cocoon and try it out. You have nothing to lose. The worst is you'll come back. That's it, that's all. So choose your network, choose your tribe, choose the people that you are happy to surround yourself with, that really this chemistry goes, because there are many. And definitely you see the ones yeah. that you click with. There's so many people, even within this room, I can see specific people who run communities, Chloe runs communities, I run communities. Yeah. Well, so you guys are often, here we've got the hotel networking where you can speak to people who are yes. like, next to you and you can find your tribe because I think everyone needs their individual. Absolutely. And, and you know, just one thing to add, you know, like Cyprus is, is turning much more international than it was. You know, like I'm originally from Belgrade, from Serbia. I have been in Cyprus since 99. It's like, you know, half of my life, over half of my life. Um, so, so I can, you know, compare. And I know what Cyprus was, you know, like 20 years ago, what was 10 years ago, what it is now. It's less and less relevant where you're from. <laughs> it's it's absolutely, you know, like, it's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah. Like, you know, in my company, you know, like, it's people from all, you know, all over the world. I don't even, I almost ask the nationality, you know, it's like, you know, it's just it's like, what are you about? What are you doing? What are you building? How can I help you? Can I help you? You know, can I help you to succeed here? Because it's not easy to succeed here. You know, again, you know, like it, it's it's really hard. So that's why, you know, only by kind of, you know, helping each other, we can succeed. I think it's about picking yourself back up and that kind of brings me to my next question of kind of failure and overcoming that. And maybe you can help with this. Sure, that's any. So it's really interesting. How have you overcome the, the failures? Um, the, the first one, one, the first one, okay, so I've been, I've been uh, an entrepreneur for 19 years and I just managed um, with my team to raise funding and we're official now. Mm -hmm. So it took, it took a long time. Granted, I started this journey when the ecosystem was not quite there, so there were challenges that were external, although I don't tend to externalize any type of obstacle. I don't see my environment as an obstacle. I tend to always look, you know, to add, I can find a solution. You know, I don't like to point outside and say, you know, that person or that situation was to blame for anything that happened to me, right? So, um, the first failure was the three bottles of wine. So, and a lot of crying on the couch. And then um, the second failure was, um, was more planned, I'll put it like that. It was, I had something happening, and I kept, I just, at that point I was already part of the network, and I had the very good luck to have people around me to point me, okay, you gotta, you gotta stop that, don't spend any more time on that, let's take that idea and keep with it. You need to 
do something more scalable, more innovative. And again, I had to fail, but it was more like a plan failure. And then I had to start again from zero. And um, in between, there were other small ones as well, and all the hundreds of no's, and all the, you know, I'm just talking about the pivotal moments where you actually have to say this idea is gone, this company is gone, you know? Those were the big ones. And but how do you put your emotions aside? Because I know I struggle with this, and my partner always says you just need to have your business mind on rather than your emotional, because I feel like women, we are a little bit more emotional statistically, mm -hmm. right? How do you put your emotions aside when it comes to a big decision, or even the journey, because the journey's not easy? No, it's not. Um, okay, so what we're building to begin with, uh, Heroes Made, is a passion for social and emotional learning, which is very nice. Just don't need to bother you. So it's, it's um, even adults do this. Exactly. <laughs> this is for children because we are trying to prevent, not um, cure or treat. So we hope that if we prevent a lot of things, we're not going to have so many issues in the future. So that has five pillars. I'm going to quickly name them. One is self-awareness. One is self-management, which is how you manage your emotions. Then you move on to social awareness. You have responsible decision taking and relationship skills. So it was very organic for me to learn the process because it happened through what I'm building. You know, it's one of the pillars, and there's so much that I have to read about it. And <clears throat> I don't think it's something that you can learn by, it's through experience. It's through experience and eventually you just, it's not a <laughs> real question. Yeah, yeah, it's a, you become a little numb, but it's not a bad thing. You become a little numb to certain things. you expect it. Yeah, yeah, and then you just move on. You just, you know, say, okay, what can I learn? Okay, all right, I just move on. Is that what you're saying? Take it to us. So, that, that's it. It's not something that you can learn from day one, um, unless you have a book. You've been exposed to social emotional learning from young age, you know? Like if you haven't, then you will learn from the process. Yeah. Look, um, you know, the, she mentioned, you know, that the platform is made, you know, like for kids. Um, the earlier we teach kids, and this is what I'm trying with, to quote my, you know, son and my daughter, you know, like to, to tell them to embrace you know, failure to embrace, you know, sometimes losses, let's say in tennis or whatever, the better, you know, they will realize that this is absolutely normal and that this is what you will be seeing throughout life, you know, like, and you just have to, you know, do like this and move on. So it starts, you know, like from early age, but, you know, even if we have not been, let's say, brought up in that way, that we can just start right now, you know, like, all of us, and especially this is good for the ecosystem because this is, you know, like by embracing the chance of a failure, especially in the startup life, is like so high. That's even put it at 99%. Now, you know, like in order to encourage more female entrepreneurs, right, which this is the topic of today's panel, we have to let them know, just be aware, you know, like the chances are not very strong, but it's good because you know, even if you go through it, you know, the chances are going to be much more with the future attempts. And it's about grit, I think. It's not yes. what we learn, what I think I've learned throughout my entrepreneurial the journey is, it's not about the resilience, because when you're resilient, it's like you feel like you're in a trampoline, you fall, you wake up, you fall, you stand up, you fall, you stand up. It's not about building this, and it's not about separating your emotions at all because you are we are emotional human beings and emotions are part of us and when you build the grit and you have your passion then and the, and your passion is your emotion it's not your mind it's your emotion that push you and tell you in spite of everything you're going to continue and i think from personal experience out of having uh, dealt with the Lebanese explosion and the half of the country destroyed and I came to Lebanon and the first thing I started is to build my business again from zero from scratch so you learn with time that nothing can stop you because you build the grid you know things are gonna happen we have things we can control in a business and we have things we cannot control but we can control ourselves and really pick ourselves up and keep our passion alive and this is what keeps the business alive it's you it's not, it's the system and the process, everything is support, but it's you as an entrepreneur. So really it's building this grit, not that it is the resilience of a trampoline, 
rather the grit where you join your discipline, your passion, you're waking up even when you don't feel like it and things are going to be tough at work. Sometimes you're going to feel, I don't want to go, I don't want to continue, I want to give up. And this is when you say no to yourself, no, I'm going to continue because I've passed 99% of my bad days and this is just another day. So really, just stand up and build this grid. And this grid is built only by failing, learning, mm -hmm. failing again and then learning again. And then you build the, the skin for it. Mm -hmm. But you keep your emotions. This is my advice. Without emotions, we have no passion. And without passion, there are no women entrepreneurs no, no, no. as well. Emotion is what is ultimately, I think, Mm -hmm. Definitely. Power. Yes, yes. exactly. Never. So passion is there and it's what drives the business. Absolutely. So don't park your emotions. Don't be drama queens. Yes, this we are <laughs> Okay, don't <laughs> misunderstand <laughs> me. No drama <laughs> queens. <laughs> this is not my emotion. <laughs> but let's build on those emotions and uh, do it. Because it's going to happen. Um, I agree with the kind of don't be drama queens. Um, in order to actually um, succeed in, in business, you actually have to be concrete in your asks. And this is, you know, this is always what, let's say, even the angel investors are saying to the, the founders. What are you building? What are you looking for? What, you know, like, is out there that, you know, I can help you with? So, be concrete with your asks, you know, like know that you are on some kind of mission, define what mission you are on, and then go and ask and look for it, you know? Like, so again, it's it's that emotion, the kind of the go-getter, the kind of the hustler emotion that you need to put, you know, forward. So yes, I agree with the emotion because it's the spark in the eyes and it's the desire to, you know, like just get get knowledge, get contacts, you know, open some doors, you know, this is how, you know, like this emotion will take you through. Okay, so we're gonna move on to women as early stage startup founders. Um, we've got question three with Slido. Do I need to no, no? Just read the question. Okay. Next question. So what do you believe the most significant challenge is when it comes to women in business and entrepreneurship? So I'll give you a few seconds. So, the, yeah, you've got all the answers So lack of self-confidence, social expectations, not enough resources to get started, even treatment preparations, and dealing with emotions, being undervalued, fundraising, and finding co-founders and partners. Does it work? No. 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 Has. Get you know paid 
um, and so on. Um, so it's, it's definitely a problem. You said no? Well, no, but I think, well, I haven't, but um, it was most likely a combination of factors. I actually went out of the direction. I went in a different direction. I said, I'm going to get this race as high as possible and see what happens. Can you speak time? Yeah, so, so this doesn't apply to my startup um, experience. It applies more to my freelance career as a writer. Um, and I decided from day one that I am going to say no if mm -hmm. it's not going to be worth my time. And so I read about, I read about this quite a bit, and then I realized that it's a trap if you fall into that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you know, there's that expectation always. So I just went in complete opposite direction. I went as high as I possibly can based on my years of experience. And it seemed like people like that more. Recently raised my prices for something that I was doing, and I had more requests now, and it was half the price. You respected more. Yeah. I was, I was starting to say 200 for something, and then I put it up to 400, and I actually had to turn people away because now I can no longer do that. I have a startup. And that's why I raised the rates, thinking that they're going to leave me alone now. Because I don't want to talk everyone. And there's no more time. It's just more people that came, and now I have to outsource this to everybody else. You know, I, I'm finding friends in, in the same area, and I'm outsourcing this work. Because, yeah. So it works better if you overcharge. I think <laughs> it's <that's laughs> having it's 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 businesses. It's and entrepreneurs, when you're first starting, you suffer with that. Yes. Because it's seeing the value of what you're giving as a business and giving, and because uh, giving value and worth to what you're providing as yes. a service, usually people have challenge with. But this happens only at startup, very early startup. Yes. And then once the, you, you get the confidence and you know what you're providing and you're very sure of your service, mm -hmm. then this doesn't stay as an issue. But definitely, as starting a business, this will hit you at the beginning, and the first thing you need to do is really think of the value you're providing and and go with it. Yeah, you have yes. to justify why you're charging. It's not it's about justifying; it's, it's giving value, yeah, it's not value. justifying. Yes, it's giving value, value uh, to what you're giving. So when you see the value, people will see it. If you don't yes. see the value, people will not see it. Exactly. So you charge whatever you see as valuable to your business, and you go for it. And there are some people that you're that are gonna say you're expensive, and you say yes then you're not my perfect customer. Thank you, good luck to the others. But you need to build this, because at the beginning you're gonna say, no, I, let me review my price. Don't do that, because if you start reviewing, then rat, 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 you will always review. So stand firm and really, people are able, able, when they want a service, they will pay for it. If they see it valuable and you're providing it to the right target, they will pay you much more than you think. So just be clear on your ideal client and who you are serving, and what you're giving, and then you don't worry about this. And do you feel like there's support for those like women within entrepreneurship? It depends enough. on your tribe. There is not enough, definitely, not enough. and you can always build more and more and more on this because even it's not only about women entrepreneurs, it's about women and women, men entrepreneurs. We always tend to say women, women, women. But it's all the entrepreneurs who need support. Yes, yes women need support and men need support. It's about the person needing support, and this is my personal view. Uh, I believe it's the person. Mm -hmm. And we all, as entrepreneurs, whether men, businessmen, or businesswoman, we need the support. And we, we struggle more because we struggle as women first with our, how we say things, and even coming from the corporate world, I think everyone coming from the corporate world, if, if you have a promotion and you give it to a man, he'll say yes, even if he doesn't know how to do it. If you give it to a woman, let me think. The kids, the family, da, 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 and then I'll tell you. So, because we're used to this, but at the end of the day, grab the opportunities, and we all need support, men and women, equally, I think, um, in my point of view. Uh, equally, but women a bit more, in my view. Uh, and that's why I believe that Cyprus is not sufficiently tapping even into the EU funds to put a bit of a gender lens, to close a bit, the, not a bit, a lot, the gender gap, uh, because the gender gap is evident, it's obvious. Do so, you think to attract duties because there's not as many women already part of it? And that's never I, percent. I, will, I will tell you, I, I have an anecdote to, to say. So, uh, I have a good friend who has been you know, reaching out to me saying she wants to start her business and so on. 
and we spent a few weeks on kind of mapping, you know, how she's going to do it, what she's exactly going to do, what are the kind of networks and people she needs to kind of plug in with, and I introduced her to some people that perhaps they, they can explore synergies, they can kind of launch this because it's actually amazing, it's, it's, it's very much needed, let's say in Limassol and so on. Um, after, let's say, two, three weeks, I just see that, you know, she got a certain corporate role. And I go and quote her and I say, sweetie, like, until almost, you know, last week, you know, like we have been saying about you starting up. And she just told me, you know, I actually freaked out because I put it on paper how much of my savings I need to, you know, plug in. How, you know, like this is going to cost me as well, put me away from my child, that I will need to afford very, you know, high paid nanny so as not to be with him to build my business. And when I put it on paper, plus I did not know where to turn for advice, you know, for maybe grant or something like that. So I decided to take a job. So this explains it. You know, it's, it's tough. Where, you know, why we cannot have a, an information desk for, you know, founders, it can be male and female, but especially for female, where they can get information. Can they get grants? Can they get interest-free loans? What does it mean, you know, to start? Do, are there any mentors? You know, like, I mean, are there any assistance with anything? You know, I'm furious because we are too late to have done this. We, you know, perhaps we should have tapped into the funding that's available. So I'm always encouraging, you know, that as Cyprus, we should take a hard look. You know, there are statistics, there are, there are these kind of, you know, case studies. You know, like what could have been done to support this female entrepreneur to actually start up her business that would make it easier for another 300 women to have assistance with their child support and so on. It's a spillover effect on the society. It's about the mindset, I think, Victoria. It's about the mindset where you want security <coughs> versus taking the risk and starting your business. It's about what you want. If somebody is looking for the uh, paycheck at the end of the month, and then they would go for the corporate no, no, job. It's, it's a tough one because you know, that, you know it's a hard reality. You need to pay the bills, but at the same time you want to start the business. Yes, and you can do it if you have the mindset and you decide that it's the same but you need to, to do the work that is there, so so you get it. This is the way. No. It's actually about <laughs> getting the it's, work done. It's just, it's just so and I it's actually very very love it. Yes. It is a male solution, okay? So, because I'm also a mother, and I gave up my job when I first started this journey to discover that it's going to take way more than I thought. So, the best way to do this, if you really want to do this, um, it's not going to be easy, but it's to pluck out from this 9 to 5 because there you're uh, exchanging your time for money and you are um, not in charge of your schedule, right? So what's the best solution? The best solution is to utilize any type of skills that you have and look into um, a freelance type of scenario, okay? So that's how I stopped the corporate stuff. I jumped into the freelance. It wasn't a lot of money at the beginning. Now it's more money that I actually I was thinking maybe maybe I should just continue that. Like it, it built up to a point where it's perfect, you know, and then I had to give that up because the company got funding, which is I'm more than happy to do. But um, there is a solution and it's not a lack of resources, it's lack of being resourceful. That's what I think is happening to everyone. So I think we need we can find solutions. I agree with everything you said, we do need all that because a lot of people might not have the capacity to, they don't feel as powerful in the beginning or as empowered, right? So it's a, it's a process. So having that would definitely push more people into that area, right? But there is solutions. There yes, is. I agree. And one of the solutions is Cyprus embracing the future world. It's already late. Um, in Cyprus, we do not acknowledge that all of us can hold 10 positions. We do not acknowledge that. Can you imagine that the person cannot get a work permit in Cyprus if they have two jobs? They can only get one permit. This is absolute insanity. Because if I want, I'm going to have 100 positions. Why? Men do. There are men that have 100 directorships in Cyprus. You know, why is it that third country nationals cannot do? Why is it that women cannot do? 
All these questions require answers. So, embracing future work, allowing women to have as many positions as they want, allowing them to, as you mentioned, you know, register their freelance businesses, have easy business banking, and so on, because that's again, you know, like a struggle for many. And I embrace, you know, as well that, you know, Cyprus is extremely diverse. So we need to have solutions that kind of fit also the community. You know, the community doesn't fit, especially due to third country nationals. I'm Serbian, but I'm Cypriot. But I recognize there are many in this room that perhaps are not Cypriot. They're going to struggle to open bank accounts. They're going to struggle to register the business. They're going to be asked, why do you have three or four roles? Why do you care? You know, at the end of the day, if I'm paying taxes on my 100 positions, great. Exactly. <laughs> Did I understand it well that you say that here in Cyprus there is no hub for women to start a business or there are no NGOs supporting women in order to open up a business? Believe no legal me. support, no finance. I think you we know. just started one. Hmm? I think we just started one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to start many. You know, the more the yeah, merrier. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we just need to have those kind yeah, of... Yeah, we have but hubs, but yes. we need more. They get, for example, other countries like Greece, they have... Women only in fintech, women only in different industries. This, this we don't have it. Right now in Cyprus, we don't have it, for example, to customize and take five women in shipping. I mean, uh, oh, wait, is this a good thing? Perhaps what we're missing is that there might be a lot of things that I'm that we're not aware of. Perhaps what we're missing is a centralized place where all this information is exactly. available, right? Oh, because sorry. I can go to um, okay. 20 different pages and I might still not know what's available. You know, so we need a centralized place that doesn't look at partnerships. Oh, these people are not in my network. In these people are not. Yeah. In, and in English. English. So because yeah. because you know, as again, again, information is disseminated in the local language. I speak, I write, I read. I appreciate many others don't. I fight for those that don't. So inclusion means you know you need to be at least using English as well. It's coming. Oh no no! It's just, yeah, well, there is a, there is a, there is the one problem that I've experienced in Cyprus wasn't so much this, but again I had a network so I was able to tap into information. Right? I can see how it's challenging if you don't at the beginning. However, um, unfortunately, it's a segregate for such a small island. We do have segregation, and what happens is that this community. In this community, we don't want to work together for whatever political or non political reason, right? So you have these segregations happening, which who pays the price? The entrepreneurs, you know? So all these things have to be taken aside. We need to have a centralized place where the information is there. It doesn't matter if it's coming from a political initiative or if it's coming from an NGO or if it's coming from, it doesn't matter. It needs to all be together so we can all access it. We, all have, we have the same starting point. And, and that's the importance of social entrepreneurship. Because having social entrepreneurship. No, no, we, we, we do have after a panel about social entrepreneurship. But you know, social entrepreneurship will hopefully bring this to the surface. You know, like collaborate with NGOs, perhaps detach it from the politics side of things, which is, you know, very painful, you know, like in Cyprus. Um, and, you know, like, just basically en enable those solutions to the problems we're facing. Where to find information, wh you know, who to tap into, what about interest-free loans, what about grants, wh what, what options do we have? Can I add something, just one thing? I come from a country where there is no government, okay? <laughs> where the government has been in coma for seven years, over 25 years. And it's either the people who work together and do this community, or if we rely on the government, nothing is going to happen. We rely on our government, the whole country exploding. So it's effectively going to come from the civil people like us that are going to create this community. Because if we wait for them, we're going to wait forever and for another 25 years in coma. So the decision has to be made to create an ecosystem for entrepreneurs together made from us as people where we share knowledge and we get out of this competitive mindset where there is a share for everyone. Yes. We're not competing here, we're all supporting each other, 
And when this, when we can break this stigma about we're not competing and communities can work together, then we don't need a government. We can create our own self-sufficient economy. Yes. But if we work together, if we can continue on working each, each community work on their own, I work on my own, he works on his own, then nothing is going to happen. Absolutely. And waiting for a government coming from there, I tell you, forget it. Honestly, we need to create it on our own and this is what needs to happen, us. Because we're all entrepreneurs and everyone who's here is interested in doing something, otherwise you wouldn't be here on a Saturday afternoon. Look, by default, by default entrepreneurship is taking charge, right? Exactly, so, so why are you waiting for the government to translate it? No, or do we are waiting for social entrepreneurs to... We need to rise up together, exactly, and do something yes. from this community onwards. Yes. This brings me to my next question because we don't have much time and we have one more section left. Um, so do you feel women need a male co-founder? I, I think women and men need each other. Yes. And it's not about men and male co-founder and women co-founder. It's about having the shared values to, be, to run a business together. Mm -hmm. It's not about your gender. You can be genderless. It's about having the same values to run a business. For me, is the diversity of thought. It's not so much, you know, this gender and whatever stuff. Exactly. It's diversity of thought. When I see a pitch deck and there is like three to seven guys, typically, and they are all the same age, all from the same university, all from the same, you know, like background, I do question. You know, there is no diversity of thought. It's an echo chamber. You all share the same values. How is anybody going to challenge you? So it's a diversity of thought. And I guess we to the next question of the challenges when it comes to women entrepreneurship. Because we don't have much time. Can we get one from each of you? The challenges are many. Uh, For sure. Yeah. Uh, one is... Uh, Maybe that you've been through the... Okay. Look, um, entrepreneurship is a journey. And it's to enjoy the ride. In order to enjoy the ride, you know, sometimes imagine, you know, like you just need to put the headphones on, you know, like some good music in the background, and to roll, you know, and there will be bumps on the road, but you know, just kind of keep the positive, good vibe, you know, like, and you just kind of continue. That's it. This is not a challenge that I've dealt with, but it's a challenge that I know others deal with. Um, it's having the, because I have a kid as well, right? Because my husband was the mother, <laughs> he was very hands on, and he just took, it, he took charge of everything, which allowed me to actually spend the extra 10 hours a day to build this, mm -hmm. right? And I also had um, my family next door, so I could just drop the kid there. So this is not something that, but I can very well see that if I didn't have this environment, it would have made it excruciating and possibly it would have made me um, have to choose between my kid at some point or adventure. adventure, right? This is not something I dealt with, but this is something I see others dealing with, okay? So it's only okay. <laughs> I think in Lebanon I've done something else, here is something else, but being new inside work, I think having the tribe is a big challenge and finding the right tribe, because it's not being part of any tribe, it's the right tribe and finding this right support system that will support you. And this is challenging. It's not a piece of cake that you can find that will come and will help you because there is this mindset that there is not enough for everyone. So this is a big challenge where we need to break the stigma about there is. Yes, it's finding the right track where you feel supported and you feel you can add value to each other. And this is really a challenge. Yeah, we should compete between us so much. We should not compete, yes. there is more no. than enough. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like I feel like it's something we learned through the process. Yeah, you know, like I still you know, the, 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 this about the kind of no communication. Uh, actually, started crying the, when you were introducing. You mentioned you know the community is all about give first and then expect second. So this is what needs to happen in Cyprus. That everybody goes out there with an approach. Okay, what can I offer you? You know, what do you need exactly? Yeah. And in that way, you know, like it's not only to get, and, and you know, they know, they know even about the community that I founded. I don't look for people that come to tell me this is what I'm selling. No, I look for people that want to come and say, what are you people building? What do you need help with? You know, so it's kind of like 
give first attitude that for long has been missing in science. And the receive first attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, so, so, yes, so it's because people are not ready to receive it with those. Yeah. Let's move to our last topic because we've still got uh, another panel. I know we've been talking about this for hours. So, women in fundraising, I know you've got some experience in that. So, the first question for Maria. So, do you feel you're treated differently as a woman regarding fundraising? Regarding what? No. No, no. 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 I wasn't but I don't know. Uh, do you feel that you treated differently as a woman regarding fundraising? So you are trying to get fundraising? At least it's what you're allowed, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> say that the, the climate right now is, is actually more perfectly suited for women because women are typically more resilient, you know, like they're more cost conscious. They are less exaggerating on their pitch decks, you know, like men tend to say, we are here to create a new unicorn. I've seen like 500 pitches, you know, like in the last one year with we are here to create a new unicorn. I've never seen a woman start with that. You know, so, so, you know, like women, they know their budgets and their maths and they don't, you know, like exaggerate. So I would just say now, after kind of COVID, you know, like now recession is coming. Yes, there will be more scrutiny. You know, it's actually a perfect time for women to raise fund, you know, like funding. So I encourage, you know, if we have startup founders here in the audience to kind of go for it. And come and ask me, I'll just tell you how to navigate. Yeah, and the last thing I want to say is that uh, when my first partners came on board. I don't think it was about my idea. At the time, I thought it was about my idea, but they made it very clear that they liked how I did certain things. So that's what they looked at, and then they helped me put together the next big team, you know? So it, I, I think it comes down to, yeah, the team. The team, yeah, the people that I had around me, um, and, yeah, the team is all the money. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes. And it's, you cannot, another mistake that I want to just, out there, you cannot, maybe you can, maybe you can be the exception, but you cannot do it alone, you need a good team. And not being able to share the glory, <coughs> it's not a good thing for an entrepreneur, you know, it's
it's not because it's not about that. It's about bringing the results, about making the change, right? So you have to be able to work with people. Uh, without them, it's, it's very hard, you know? Complementary yeah. skills. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so we have now some time for Q&A. If anybody has any questions? Alex? Uh, a question, some clarifications, some disagreements. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe pick one. <laughs> <laughs> very quick. We live in a country that two years ago we passed a law on social enterprises and they're just struggling now to pass it there. So you need to understand that you live in a country that you don't have a law for social enterprises yet. No, you have a law but nobody can register because the European directive is not implemented yet. But if, if, it, if it's a directive for a, to give tax incentives to investors, and to give something to people that they have money, immediately the directive pass mm. through the channels and so So that's the country I believe. Uh, yes, I'm sick. <laughs> and I disagree that it's only the team. Personally, I believe it's 50-50. Yeah, 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 but it starts there. It's the team, but it's also the product. If you don't have the product and you have the team, of course, time, yeah, yeah. market, yes. you know, it's like a uh, product, not market, product. To have a solution. product, to have a product, a solution that actually sells. Yeah, so but it's really like that. But right? scale, a good, a good product, a solution that you can Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing that I want to tell something to have a lot of ladies here, and you probably have a lot of you, you are going to open a, your own company. You need the thing that actually police are free. Mm. It's nice, uh, okay, well, everybody says the journey is nice, and we love the journey, etc. But the journey is very hard. Mm. And actually, three out of you, ten, will manage to have the company. Seven out of you, you, you are okay with the salary. Even if you are men, if you're even if you're, the statistics are there, and actually, three out of ten people who will become, who will have their own companies and, and do their own stuff. So, yeah, that's, I don't think that's and you can yeah. comment there. No, 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 no but I'm like to be honest and uh, sure. yeah, uh, be optimistic. What you are doing is the best time now to be an entrepreneur, by the way. Uh, I don't know if it's the best time to, to find an asset women funding because actually the numbers, the last uh, two, three years, uh, Victoria knows has, has very, they are they are they very improving. lower. They are improving. Uh, they are much lower than it was before COVID. Well, yes, but now it's the time because there is much more awareness that the funds are, you know, like not diversified in terms of, you know, the things they support. So they all have it on the agenda. That's why, you know, like lately we see more female uh, GPs, we see more, you know, female venture partners and so on because they are addressing the problem. Yeah, there is more awareness. Than us. Well, there is, but there is also more funding allocated to I don't female, know if it's female entrepreneurs. Let's move this to the yes. networking because we have to close the panel. Can we give a round of applause to the three panelists? And thank you for staying with us up to now. Uh, we have our second panel. This second panel is about uh, social impact by communal uh, peace building and gender equality in Cyprus. This is more focused on Cyprus. I know that um, the conversation on the last panel moved to Cyprus and we talked a little bit um, about Cyprus issues or challenges or opportunities. Um, but we're going to dive more into it. Unfortunately, one of our um, guests couldn't make it, but the beauty of strong women is that we find the speaker right. Uh, let's not <laughs> so this is, this is a big surprise for us, but I think uh, if you are positive, everything works out for you. That's how it is. <laughs> so, I want to introduce you first to Melike Kalkan. She is a project coordinator and manager of an entrepreneurial project, um, you know, innovative entrepreneurship project, NICO. What is it short for? Um, NICO is a, a Northern Ireland uh, organization, actually. That's why. Uh, so, the project is 
funded by the European Union and it is implemented by NICO, which is from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Cooperation over six. And we have our surprise guest, Julia Tarasova. Yes, she is co founder of Kid IT. And uh, thank you, Julia, for, for just jumping in. To jump in. Jump yes, in and, and uh, just, uh, uh, did you imagine that me. this is going <laughs> to exactly? But unexpectedly, <laughs> really, you come with a with a topic which is exactly up to what we are doing, because we are initiate we initiated in Cyprus the social mutual initiative for a new way of tech education for kids of shifting them from being like passive consumers of technology mm -hmm. into understanding of how to create with the help of technology. So we are actually forming the IT community starting from the age of five. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what we started doing here, cooperating with the biggest IT companies, making it completely social, free of charge for everyone to attend incorporating with the biggest IT conferences where our, can you imagine these small kids showcasing their first real made products there. So and where, are you based? where are you based? So we started, uh, it's actually the third wave. We started in Lima, so, and uh, from September we are covering like the whole Cyprus, we'll be in Nicosia, in Larnaca, in Paphos. It's kind of a huge wave of uh, of responding to the current needs of the society for sure of the families and kids. Amazing. So yeah. and Malika, where are you based? Yeah, we are we are a project office actually, and we are based in the walled city Nicosia in the northern part of Cyprus. And it's just five minutes from the checkpoint. So if you are ever there, just visit us. We have a small mini hub, smaller than this, that you can co-work with uh, other network have the networking opportunity. Um, so uh, you can follow us also on uh, social media if you are uh, wondering. And I'm, I have many business cards with me today, so I'm uh, able to provide them to you as well. Amazing. So, Before we get started, I am not sure did we announce the results of the previous questions. Okay, so with your answers of the previous questions, I am going to give the results. So first of all, we asked, how did you hear about this event? We have the winners from Instagram ads and from a friend. Then we got uh, Facebook ads, which I'm really happy, our marketing works. <laughs> We've got started by emails, Facebook page, and then 6%, 6%. We've got Equalex and panelists. So thank you for coming. And um, the other question we ran was, the question was, what do you believe the most significant challenge is when it comes to women in business and entrepreneurship? We had 53% of everybody saying lack of self-confidence. Then we had 18% equal treatment. Uh, we had 12% perfectionism, which for me is surprising, but uh, I was talking with Poppy yesterday and she, she said there's a common common thing when women work in business and perfectionism is coming the way. We had 12% um, social expectations, 6% said fundraising, and then 0% um, not having resources, dealing with emotions and being undervalued, valued, right? So these are the question, uh, the results. I just put the, uh, the next question up. The question is, which stage are you with your business? So go ahead, if you have a business, even if you don't have a business, there's an answer for you. The choices are, are, I don't have a business. I have a business idea. I just started my business. I'm going through fundraising and I have a successful business. So answer that so we get a more general idea of what's going on in the crowd. So I find it interesting that the lack of um, self-confidence is the biggest uh, response for the question on the challenges. I find it very much connected to the social aspect as well. There was uh, the social uh, aspect in the question answers. So I find it very interesting. That they are all connected, interconnected to each other, but apparently how it is perceived by the communities is the uh, tip of the iceberg. Have you had experience? I'm that? an anthropologist as well, so I am also trying to analyze things from a little bit of social uh, aspect. It's, it's interesting to see these uh, results always for me. Amazing. So, in this panel, we're going to talk about women in social impact and innovation, which I'm sure our panel is 
pro advance in these topics, women in bi-communal business and peace building, and also gender equality businesses in Cyprus. So these are the three sections we're going to go through. So let's get started with the with the first one. Before we get started, please, any of you can explain what is social impact and innovation to our audience. Okay, would you like to start? Yes, of course. As contributor, what's more? Anyway, like I, I'm jumping. You're the already <laughs> invited. So for me, actually, personally, social impact is something which uh, you know is the synonym of uh, I would say very. Um, traditional or maybe stereotypical phrase change the world but actually uh, it's not stereotypical it's it's about this it's about bringing something that really make the impact on today from uh, what you're doing the best so and what is absolutely clear to me that you don't have to have anything except in the beginning the energy and very clear vision of your strength. So for me personally, our business, which is a business now, rather a huge business, started just with the understanding of the main pain of what is happening in my own family, let's say, in the very low close circle. Okay, we started from this, that yes, we have a huge problem of uh, not understanding how to direct our own kids into, into how to get them out of the technology, out of uh, tablets they got used to, into some productive direction of what to do further with it. So it was just the understanding that that is the pain not only of me, but of a lot of people. And then it started to to spread and to expand with the understanding of, okay, what can I personally do to change the situation? My current skills, my current expertise, I was working with the, in the gaming industry and I saw it from the professional side. Okay, what is happening there? What are the things that we can show to the kids, for example, again, to, a bit to expand their boundaries and to give the understanding also to parents that look, it's not a problem that your kid is stuck to the gadget. The problem is actually in you as a digi digital immigrant who doesn't have understanding how to direct him. So, and then it goes further and further. Like, okay, so we found the pain, which is actually a social pain. We found the understanding, okay, how can we, how can we go on? Is there anything that exists right now? Uh, 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 not much. We are, we are coming from the point of not like this. Not like in schools, not like in uh, universities. So we're trying to find some personal step, innovation, innovative step that will bring some new de this decision. And then again, it comes into, okay, and what about money? So where to find funding and all this stuff. And when you have enough energy, and sorry, but I came to the island as the foreigner with all the challenges that were explained here that, okay, you're just a foreigner, like, what, what, what do you want? So the idea is actually through your energy also to find the sources which can be out of the traditional box, not to go to funding, to investment funds for your startup idea, but for example, to find the possibility of cooperating with the companies which can support you and you're finding the financial model that will in, in, give you the possibility to grow your, your business as well. So I, I went too far and too long, but the idea was actually like from the pain that was social, socially needed, required to be solved based on our own expertise. Okay, so we are in gaming, what can we do to help them? Giving the creativity to finding the right financial model to work it mm -hmm. and just work it out. That's amazing. I want to go around the house because this is the true meaning of entrepreneurship. Yes. What three what were the pains? That what was the pain? So first of all, the pain was the pain of the parents who were coming and telling to us, "Come on, 
My kid is stuck. He's only in the computer. He has no social skills. I cannot take him out. I don't know what to do with this. He's going to lose all his friends and his social abilities. And it started from there. Then it started from the understanding what's happening in schools, for example. What's happening? Are there any experts that can help my kid to move in some appropriate direction? Teachers, no. Who, who can I address my kids to, to move into understanding of what to do next? So we started from this. And then we expanded to understand that it's not only about technology, but okay, we are adding social and emotional skills. We are adding the understanding of how to work in teams. Is it taught anywhere? No. Unless, uh, uh, unless again, the previous experience, because I was lucky in living in Silicon Valley, and I saw it like inside how it was there, imprinted from the kindergarten teaching kids how to work in teams to read, for example. And you know, all these like stuff are coming in, like the elements of becoming, okay, that is that can be a decision. Focusing on technology, adding the skills, essential skills that will be needed despite understanding the, what direction the kid will choose. What are the positive things which are the positives? A lot of them. Look, for us, technology is like an instrument. It's like a pen. But now it's not a pen. Now it's a laptop. Now it's a, a gadget. So you can use the, the ideas for you to learn how to use the pen. So technology is the pen for you to create something. So you have, if you have the understanding of how to create, then it goes because we have the kids, let's say, of 12 years old who are coming, I want to earn money. I need, this stuff. I need to learn how to get money. Okay, so technology can help you to do this. If you create your own product, if you showcase it on the biggest conference, you'll have your first clients. And it's really not a joke, because when we took our kids to the biggest gaming conference in Amsterdam, the adult game developers, Microsoft, were coming to ask and asking, like, what do you add? At first, we thought that, oh, I'm a kid. It's such a nice social initiative. But then we realized that the kids are coming with the ideas so much out of the box that they are offering such a great mechanism that we, are, as adults, are out of them. Mm -hmm. It's okay. They are real inspiration for us. So, and for the kids, can you imagine seven years old who was standing on the stage, listening the feedback from his favorite Minecraft, saying, look, great idea. Maybe you will work about this direction and we'll cooperate with you. So I think it, it is an important thing. Amazing. I'm at, uh, going back to the initial question around your perspective of what social innovation and impact is, but I want to mix it with another question that I have, which is about um, the role of women in social innovation and impact. Please elaborate. Sure. Um, I think you started with a very good real example, and now I can really build on it. So social impact, you need some problem, as any initiative would take you. You need a problem to focus on, to sort, to solve, to contribute, to achieve, to make it in a better way. Uh, when it comes to social impact, unfortunately, in nowadays, in, in this island, in both sides of the island, uh, it is still not perceived as a real um, aim, real objective. Uh, that's why, for instance, Thomas was saying earlier, social entrepreneurship is introduced in the law in the Republic of Cyprus, However, it's still not even recognized as a uh, worthy in, well, in, for the Turkish Cypriot community. So we have, we as an initiative, as a project, have a lot of uh, things to do around that, to create awareness, to teach, to uh, make people aware that 
social entrepreneurship or social impact is actually the core of everything that we are uh, building on all together. I'm sure there are many um, uh, startups here, entrepreneurs here, or those with business ideas that are aiming at uh, different social aspects. When it comes to your second question about women's involvement, I really uh, appreciate you shared your experience in Amsterdam. We have in our project a very nice, maybe smaller, maybe basic level uh, example, similar one. I would like to give that. Uh, we were running a code week in, before COVID 2019. Um, in public schools in the northern part of Cyprus, we reached to uh, tens of students who do not even have computers at home. And uh, what showed us while organizing the logistics, the, you know, everything around uh, the program, even the schools are lacking uh, necessary equipment mm -hmm. to allow easy access for every young person. Um, that's why I find it very important that this education, or it, it could be a technology education, it could be an entrepreneurship education, it should start from beginning, from childhood. It's a culture that we have to build on. And uh, when it comes to women participation in that, the situation is even worse. Uh, it's not about... Um, it sh we should show the world the community, the people around us, that it's an opportunity, entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, AI, gaming, opening a boutique hotel is an option for any um, young person, uh, but this chance has to be given equally uh, to both male and female students from very early ages. Um, I'm coming back to my example. So we we were trying to balance the numbers of students who were joining that uh, Code Week uh, program that we launched in 2019, 19 October. Uh, we found it so hard to balance it, the numbers in schools. We were begging teachers, please help us because we have to make this available to everyone and we have to welcome females so they can be uh, part of the scheme. They can be aware that this is available for, for them. COVID was a, a small initiative for us. It's a three-day uh, camp at the school uh, in communication with the public schools. And we were providing them a very basic coding training. So at the end of these three, they work, work camp or study camp, uh, they were, the students were being able to uh, develop their websites. Uh, very simple one, but very impressive for such an age. I, I cannot do it myself, so I think this is a good sign. And uh, we were really insisting on focusing on the numbers uh, to be balanced as much as possible. It was a big challenge for us uh, because we noticed that girl students, they were not thinking that coding is for them. They were not thinking that they could code or they didn't have the needs at home, they didn't have the equipment at home, uh, so that they can be aware of such a concept. At the end of the day, uh, we forced a lot uh, the teachers, the headmasters, headmistresses of all schools, and we were quite successful in balancing the numbers. And uh, after only three days of camp, and three days, not a full day, three hours, in total nine hours. And you can imagine how it goes with teenagers, you know, uh, half fun, half coding, half learning. And at the end, uh, they had this demo event where they showcased their website. And I, uh, I, we were all amazed, their families, their teachers, they were all amazed by how they could be proud of something that they achieved. And it's just giving them the opportunity. So we have to create these opportunities. This was discussed in the previous panel as well. The opportunity, creation of opportunities, it cannot be only, I don't believe it should be only with NGOs. Yes. It should be coming from the policy level. It should be coming from community level. It should mm -hmm. be coming from each and every aspect. That's the only way to achieve this because our system is not, um, 
made for um, achieving this access for equal access for everyone. So we have to all work on it individually, as a community, as an organization, as businesses, as uh, this community here. This is amazing because one issue that we have within our society is that um, we underestimate ourselves and our teenage mm -hmm. and youth. Um, and we pre-assume that we, our capability is around this border and circle of skills. But when is given the opportunity and the push and the environment, why correct environment, a lot of surprising things comes out because like we step out of our comfort zone and then once we're out of our comfort zone, then we understand that we are so much more uh, capable than what we think we are. That's why I believe that um, we need more social movements through entrepreneurship to push people to step out of their comfort zone and find these capabilities and skills so that they can say, aha, uh -huh, I mean, I am more capable. I can do much more. I can learn some areas that I thought I would never learn. I'm actually good at it, exactly. right? So this is amazing work that you're doing. And, uh, and uh, I just wanted to add one more thing, yes. because I think that sometimes people are mixing or maybe subdividing, let's say, I'm doing this business or I'm doing social impact. Mm -hmm. I heard this a lot of times. That's okay. I cannot make social impact with, let's say, I don't know, organizing the conference, for example, or something like this. I'm making money, yes, out of this. Mm -hmm. But I think that this social impact as the philosophy is actually the most essential for your business to grow, to be the glue for all your team, who is actually changing the world, as I mentioned in the very beginning. So, and the, I, I made this example also with the conference, for example, because it was, it used to be also my, one of my businesses before, like that in any business, you're adding this social impact at first in your mind as the founder, okay, in what way I'm changing actually the world. And when you're having this imprinted in yourself, then the way you are presenting your idea is absolutely, is, it's on the other level of energy. Absolutely. That's and uh, the most important that it requires a lot of less efforts to motivate your team to keep it motivated because they are also from the. For example, we are working with a very fragile audience of the employees. Let's say 18, 21 years old, so teenagers are not working for money mm -hmm. they are working first of all and they need to be motivated with the idea mm -hmm. with the idea of their influencing the world let's say so and we clearly understood that this imprinting of, of social impact in all our processes made us move very fast so it helped in all the levels from the teams to the sponsors to the fundings when you're coming with the changing the world idea and so on. So that's why I just wanted to make this comment that it's not a subdivision. Let's say where our social project, which is free of charge, is social impact. No, our previous project was also with the social impact. We created the platform that bring people of the same expertise from different parts of the world together. So that was our impact of giving them the platform for meeting, for example. So, and one more, the social impact uh, aspect of anything, basically, what we are doing, it's easier to own, it's easier to feel it's within yourself. I think that's pretty yes, much what you uh, mean. It's uh, much easier to create a culture of a company, a project, whatever you are doing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And, uh... One thing that confuses uh, in this topic is that uh, a lot of people think that social enterprises don't make money, right? But there are a lot of moments, there are a lot of structures and plans to monetize social enterprises. So it's perceived to be like, like a charity helping the communities and societies, but you can create really solid monetization plans that can be fully integrated into a social enterprise and also have it self-sustained and also at the same time uh, benefit the, the social, do the social impact as we talked about. So closing this and going to the next
topic, which is about like community businesses and peace building and also women in these areas. Uh, let's get into some of your UN experience. Um, how do you think, let me give an example first. Um, we're working closely with this organization called Take to Peace. You might have heard about our event coming up 24th, uh, which I'm not moderating who want to see. Uh, Take to Peace, basically what they've done, they use entrepreneurship to start peace building between, between Israelis and Palestinians, right? So they got Israelis and Palestinians in the same room. They gave them the same goal to start an entrepreneurship idea, a business or something. And they were surprised after three or four days of these activities that all of their differences, all of their conflicts just got for forgotten because they were all focused on the same goal of entrepreneurship. So my question here is that, how do you think entrepreneurship can help with peace building? Oh, I have recently, recently this, the last way that we started, because that is also one of the things which, which I also want to emphasize, that actually they, we are looking at the events in the world and we are realizing that no predictions, I mean, no long-term plans because just in a second, everything can change. <laughs> and even when we were planning to restart the project and make the third wave, the conditions in the world, sorry, I'm originally from Ukraine, so they changed completely. And it meant that, for example, we faced the question of putting, as you mentioned, in the same room, the, the families from Ukraine, from Russia, from Cyprus, and to connect them, not subdivide them on the level of, are you, okay, you're making the social project, you're Ukrainian, are you making it for Ukrainian kids only, for Ukrainian relocated families only? No, guys, we are created something, a space, a peaceful space, which is actually united on the basis of the values of our kids. There is no subdivision according to races, to nationalities or anything. So please don't mess up us with this. We are creating the space where different families are together. And it is an incredible experience, really. When we have what, what we also find as a social impact for us now is actually to give this unite, united platform for their communication, mm -hmm. for the commu not for the kids, they're okay, but for the parents. Mm -hmm. When they're meeting in the same room and they introduce each other, I'm from Kiev, I'm from Moscow, I'm from Minsk, I'm from Limassol, and you at first you face this like, okay, kind of a strange reaction, like, um, okay, Moscow, no, I won't speak, yes. But then through your way of moderating them, you are creating a very peaceful environment. They start to communicate. They start to ask, okay, do you need any help? Yes. Like, okay, how long are you on an island? And we realized that, okay, that is a social impact as well. We are giving the slight bridge into entering the island for different nationalities through the kids, of making the network through the kids. And I think that it's shifting the focus of from course. conflicts into completely like no politics, nothing. We are here because we are connected through the kids. Um then okay. Uh, let's let's go back to the to the topic of women in business. How what differences do you see between the both communities of Cyprus um, as for women in business? What are the differences between the both communities? What are the major differences that is obvious? I'm not sure if I can really respond to that because uh, I am learning the both communities startup ecosystem still. I can talk more about the Turkish city of ecosystem and I would appreciate any comments from the audience on the mm -hmm. uh, Republic of Cyprus ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem for women is not only women, sorry, I'm repeating. Ecosystem for entrepreneurship is in a very premature state for the Turkish Cypriot community. I see that there are some similarities between uh, both sides uh, of the island. However, uh, I think we are still at a phase that we don't even know what entrepreneurship is. Uh, so 
the actions we are taking either with our project or with other uh, NGOs through uh, different initiatives or through startups that are passionate about spreading the word about entrepreneurship is uh, at the very basic level, basic steps, baby steps, let's say. Uh, awareness creating and uh, making people aware that this is an option for you. You don't have to work at the public sector. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a real option. And uh, nowadays we are living in a global age. We have tech everywhere. We have access to all around the world with one second. So uh, anything we do as a community, as an ecosystem partners, is towards increasing that awareness, uh, making it possible to access being an entrepreneur. I can give one example. Uh, we have this program called Into Business. Uh, in Turkish, it's called Ishinikur. So what we aim to achieve there is, do you have a business idea? Come, we will train you. We will teach you the basic concepts of entrepreneurship. And we will make you uh, aware if your business is uh, doable, first of all, it's profitable. Is it something you really are passionate about so that you can continue? Uh, so. As I said, we are working through the baby steps uh, in a way that we try to increase the uh, understanding of an entrepreneurial journey. And regarding women participation at that program, I can say that 51% uh, of the, those with a business idea are approaching us uh, are women. So this is a very good sign because Sometimes you have to give it in a simple way. You know, sometimes our words are a little bit complicated. Business ventures, angel investors. If you are not aware of those uh, wordings, it could seem scary to you. Sometimes it's also good to uh, absorb the community, absorb the culture, understand what's And then uh, provide a tailor-made approach so what we try uh, with that into business program that we reached already hundreds of uh, people, including women, more than half women, uh, is that we try to provide them. As I said, it's a never-ending story. It's a never-ending journey for all of us. We are all contributing. And uh, every day is a better day, day than yesterday. That's good. Improvement is always a uh, good sign. And let's just improvise this. What, what did the difference? You said you live in Silicon Valley, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. What differences do you see from uh, Republic of Cyprus uh, than Silicon Valley? What are the things yeah. that you do? Four years ago, when I came to Cyprus and I met pa uh, Panis mm -hmm. on one of his events, I said, God, last I felt this vibe of Silicon Valley here. Mm -hmm. Because actually, Silicon Valley is not the place. It is a vibe. First of all, it's the vibe and the, and the perfect networking space where you start sharing the ideas from the moment when you enter the taxi and you have pitch elevator while driving. Yes, and everybody's pitching to you his ideas. So of a sudden, you're getting into the atmosphere where everything is about ideas, about a project. The second thing is about, was about willingness to help. Really, you're meeting with the people, you're coming to networking event, and that was what I was very surprised, not here in Cyprus, but in general, in, in CIS countries in general, that when people came to networking event, they were stuck into the people who they knew. Mm. And I was like, what is the aim of the networking here? Because in the valley, it was like, it was so traditional just to go, what are you doing? When, when you came to the company here, people were like, okay, I don't know you, why? So uh, probably this openness and this uh, understanding that if I came to networking, I'm about networking. I'm about coming to people and asking, what are you doing? How can we cooperate? How can we cooperate? That what that what I, what I felt at the at these first events when I did came. Did you, did you feel the same when I invited you around? Just to be like, okay, now yes, you're That's that's true. This this is something for people that joined us on the previous events. I always say it at the end of the event because we have networking session after the talks. 
is that um, I'm going to say it now. Usually, I say it at the end of the event. Um, that, in my opinion, everybody holds a key to some sort of a lock that you have internally, and the only way to find these hidden keys to your uh, to find a solution is to talk to people you never met before, and you will be so surprised that um how our world brings people together for a common purpose so but the only way to unlock this power is to randomly talk to people that you don't know and this is i really uh, emphasize this on our events and i want everybody after after this event to find someone that they don't know and as, as much as it's uncomfortable to just open up a conversation just like hi my name is this i do here what do you do and just go with that yes Unless, unless you're not the newcomer to the place yeah. and to the island, when you don't know who is out of this audience is going to be your person. You know if you're a major one, right? So it's why you went to the why you went to the remember? <laughs> this is one of the values I mentioned in the beginning. We're not here to make contacts. That's like I guess it's part as you said. We're not here to contact the front with English. Yes, we're here to create. <laughs> I think we're talking about the same thing. It's not a speed dating here. What's your name? Where's my card in that? But it's good that, let's say, if you get lost in the conversation, to say, like, okay, give me the chance to talk to some other people, and let's follow up on a coffee or something later on and exchange numbers. Sorry. I can't. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But speaking networking is what I'm missing here, you know, sometimes because it's kind of, I would call it fast food, you know, fast food mixture of the people. Oh, coming, <laughs> promise. Okay, now you're coming. Because really, sometimes I completely agree with you. You are speaking about the deep conversation, about the meaningful connection, kind of. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need this very fast surface level scanning. Oh, understand. Yes, with your level. And it doesn't have to be when you stop. I mean, probably you're going to be running. Oh, bravo. I agree with this completely. Sometimes you need one thing. Some people want to be talking about the best You don't need to invest. You can have one product, but you need that product. And if you win, you want to get one. And that one is the one that's interested. It's going to tell you what program is going to be doing. Yes, that's, that's the other. And that's a big challenge. That's a really big challenge, not maybe in small environments like that, but when you are approached for a startup event, this is a big challenge. I mean, you have to study for those events in advance. You have to know who are the audience, who are the potential investors, who are the potential startups that you can collaborate. So uh, understanding your point, I think, it is important if you could identify already in advance, yes, that that could work. But in a more social environment like that, I think uh, both sides may work. Mm -hmm. Sure, let's do it. What is your name? Hi. If you don't know what you want, you can work Ask the right questions to get the right answer. Sure. What is it? What is it that you want? Maybe 
I am gonna debate with you because I am adding <laughs> to this. <laughs> I'm adding to this the element. I'm just talking about the sorry. Yes. It's the, the, the money and the relationship because why are we think we should talk social? Social is to build relationships. When someone trusts you, they buy from you. When someone trusts you, they get you. Whether it's their time or their money or their skills or anything. So if you don't, you're going to be respect. And people, come on. You know, you, you, you yes, don't have to agree. You don't have to go on your bike or try. You don't have to go on your bike or try. You don't have to go on your bike or try. You don't have to go on you know that then super connected to your money industry, then we know how it's getting Yes, but that's an that idea. Super super connected to me to trust. But what I am voting for, maybe, is actually that okay, when you're coming with your, when you are just starting something, and when you're coming as not. Not having enough homework done before, let's say. Yes, not having known the right people before. And uh, actually, your meaningful connection can be at the bar while drinking the water. If you are open to speak, yeah. like what you're doing. And that is the question, that is the point which is missing in, in the culture here as well. Because uh, you need to be introduced somehow, as you mentioned. And what I'm saying that, okay, it's, it's so normal just really to come to the person while you are drinking tea together and just ask what's your business. Mm -hmm. And uh, because especially when you're a foreigner, I consider I'm asking you, but I consider myself. Just for the fact that I don't speak the language because they look at me, so I say, Yes, I'm Lebanese. So, this is what I say. I, I rarely say I'm Cypriot, only when I need it at the back. <laughs> or I need it for some papers. But really, naturally, it's a struggle because here, to go to talk to somebody, they look, they look at you. Whereas if I, I met you yesterday and we just connected because we were both like, to having a connection and we have to be like we've known each other for ages. It's the function that we not accept if you walk around and you find a freedom. Then it is my balance. So it's a challenge. We cannot find and say yeah, we're very welcome. No we're not. Because it's a challenge to talk to her when I don't know if I find it and the voice is mine again. We have to talk her. And it's having the skill to really approach those people. It's not easy. That's the thing. It requires a lot of effort. If yes. I do my homework and somebody there doesn't go to spine at me, thousands of homework will not tell me where to go to spine. So it's really building up the skill and what to find itself exactly. You need to have those connections that are connecting you to the yeah. others. But until you get to those connections, you have to share it. Yeah. It's yeah. It will be there and be visible. If they don't find mine, I look to the other, maybe they win. So it is a challenge to connect. It's not as easy as it sounds. Yes, let me go and try to connect, especially not I mean, all of us are extroverts. Exactly. And easy as making connections. Some of us are introverts. It takes a lot of effort. For them to build a connection with somebody and opening up a conversation. They might have social anxiety, they might have whatever, but they might have a very good idea that they need people. So, why do those connections is crucial? But they need a lot of effort from us and only food that you find them on the space. You need to go and then go and find out, no, 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 this is not my job. Let me try another and then be somewhere and enjoy. I, I was you I, I was I, I sometimes surprise myself that I meet some really key people in the wrongest place, unexpected places ever. So this is this is I'm gonna put my mother in her hat. The part of your vision is a big information for your vision. You must not be happy in your vision. And you just keep running. And you just bring the blood. And you just bring yourself. Or big self. Mm -hmm. And somebody, somebody, that's your thing. 
Yeah. 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 And it's interesting uh, the sort of walking on the cut it is and you know how the environment is. And it was this little booth that says free spiritual drama. Okay. And it was full with people style people inside. And like, okay, we walked in and we say, All right, let's let's go for a free drop. And the guy sat next to me, his name was Nick, I think. I don't remember. And then full beard up to here, hat, comfy clothes and all that. And then I talked to him and he, he had an experience 20 years of marketing in my industry. And you know him, you know, I'll, I'll tell you after. And, uh, and he said, yeah, I'm to be an entrepreneurship and we're, we're running coaching. I'm like, really? <laughs> and we started talking like that. I, excuse me, I have to go back to the, to the topic because we don't want to overextend because we want your energy for the networking as well afterwards. So I think I'm going to cut a little bit short from peace building and go towards um, gender equality uh, in businesses in Cyprus. So from the statistic that I did a research, Cyprus is ranked fourth from the last of the 27 EU countries regarding gender equality in power positions and economic decision making. Um, why do you think we rank so low? Well, let's go. Really. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> there is a recent report um, done by the World Bank. It's not public yet, it will be published soon. So I was just reading it uh, last week, uh, which was relevant to the panel. So I keep some <laughs> notes. This is about Turkey Cypriot community. Um, so the female labor participation in the community is only 34%. And throughout the COVID period, the job loss of uh, the entire community was 76% women. Throughout the uh, 2020 year, the COVID year, uh, female unemployment increased 4% from 8% to 12%. Reading those lines, I think it's very much in line with what you uh, mentioned in the EU ranking, is uh, unacceptable. Mm -hmm. We have to work towards it. The, uh, there are many problems around it. You, you, you call it. It's either um, the discrimination, the community discrimination, cultural expectations from women, uh, pay gap, you, call, you name it. Mm -hmm. So this is something that NGOs themselves cannot do alone. This has to be uh, covering the whole community, whole culture and policy making that. You said about pandemic, and I have a question on that. So the pandemic had a ne negative uh, repercussion effect on women in our domains, of, uh, including power, work, money, knowledge, time, health, everything. How, why? How did this happen? Like, how did pandemic affect gender equality? The cultural priorities, I would say, that is expected, that is perceived from women, is uh, not balanced. I think we all know what we are talking about, so I don't even have to give examples. And uh, women have been, apparently, the 70 plus person, have been the first ones that are uh, taken out of uh, media, you know? Okay, you, you go, you don't have to work, you go and uh, do your homework. <laughs> so this is something that uh, I'm laughing, but it's, it's not a joke, it's a very serious issue that we all have to fight against, we all have to work against, and uh, we can only do it together, not as only women. This has to be the whole community that works against it. And, um, I, hear, I think I'm lucky, you know, because I am the entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, 
actually. And I've been always working in the men's world. Always. Like the gaming industry is one, 99, 99%. It's a men's world. So IT in general is a men's world. And I will tell you really like sincerely, probably I'm out of, uh, out of the statistics. I never felt any kind of discrimination, any kind of special attitude to me like, okay, you're a woman. It was not about this until you are offering something valuable to the, uh, to the market. Mm -hmm. And that is the place where there is no discrimination in anything. If you manage to find something that gives money to someone, you are, you're going further. So that's why I cannot comment anything about like the discriminated part of women, let's, of women, let's say in Cyprus, because I don't feel it personal. Even being the foreigner, even being the foreigner entrepreneur here, I know that the only thing that drives, as I, and I repeat it and I repeat it, is the energy, is the firm belief in what you're doing, mm -hmm. and just go and just doing stuff without thinking that oh my god they will treat me like woman. I don't know. So you're just doing the things. If you need the expertise. You are looking for the expertise. And being a woman is much easier to find really uh, expert opinion from the men. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you are like, a, you have your ways of interacting. And when you're coming, guys, I am speaking about <laughs> professional side. But actually, when you're coming to the uh, negotiations and you're smiling and you're like bright and easy, Believe me, the, you're getting the response. And when you're coming, not like a, uh, like a girl to, but like with some really professional, let's say, advices or questions, yes, suddenly, okay, you're switching from the smiles to some professional stuff. And you're getting more than enough information for your further moves. That's why. God, it's so wonderful to be a woman in business. Like, why, why do we need to feel discriminated? It's our privilege, actually. Like, That's amazing the, the advice that you gave because, in general, man, the logic is uh, your external environment is a reflection of the internal world, how you feel about yourself. And from the question that we had, the second question, the majority felt the lack of self confidence in business. So, that radiates to your environment and your environment reacts back to you, right? So I believe that, again, I'm in no position because I'm a man and you have to have a world in that systems, but I believe that if we manage all of us to, to boost up our self-confidence, then the reaction we get from the environment is this. We cannot change our environment. We have to change ourselves. That's the only way of change. Yes, yeah. for sure. So, talk, talk about questions. I'm going to put up the next one, but before doing that, let me give you the results of the last question. We asked, which stage are you in your business? We had 41%. I just started my business. Congratulations. 24% 24, 24 says, I have a business idea. 18% two answers is either I have a successful business or I don't have a business. And My comments, you know what is the good networking at this point? Yes. For example, who has the who has started the business for people to raise their hands for us to see? see. Okay, that is the beginning. We actually have a we actually have a speed pitching. We, we had it on our plan, but I was almost forgetting it's good that you said it. We might, if you're comfortable after our questions, you can quickly 30 seconds pitch your idea, pitch your business. Okay, who has who has a business we just started? Rise up. One, two. Three. And you see now I know who we can contact with. Yes, now we are okay. Please. Who's at the idea stage? Idea stage? Cool. So the next question is actually an open text question. I'm going to put it up and it says, it's what are the challenges for women when it comes to fundraising? And you can just type it if you want. There's no multiple questions. Going back to our questions here. Um, I love that we said we were in Silicon Valley because there's a lot of comparison that we can do. Um, how do you, what differences do you see 
when it comes to, let's say, female entrepreneurship and women business from that side of the world to Cyprus? Look, I think now for the Cyprus, really what is a great stuff, what is happening is, the, I'm sorry, but the coming of such expats as us with their different completely mindset coming to the island, which actually is, I think, to my mind, is one of the most welcoming islands in the world. Really, you can feel yourself home very easily. So, and when you're coming with your expertise from the different countries, from the different cultures in general, uh, you're bringing this and you're bringing this to the island. It's a great opportunity really to accommodate all these different expertise not for us to tune into how it used to be in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Sorry, maybe slowly, slowly I will learn Greek and I will accommodate into adjusting with some things. But maybe it's an opportunity for the Cyprus to get the other expertise, to get the other out-of-box view and uh, to, to accumulate it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, I think that that is to my mind, one of the biggest probably chance for Cyprus now because of different cases of different situations in the world, but because what is happening is really what happened with Silicon Valley when the mines from all over the world came to one place mm -hmm. and they created the Silicon Valley, as I mentioned, not like a place, but as their uh, ecosystem, as the ecosystem interaction, networking and so on. So why not for Cyprus to be like this? Mm -hmm. Now we can see the diverse the, the, diver, the diversity, sorry, in our just in our room right now. And we have like completely different experiences. Let's make something unique for Cyprus. Yes. <laughs> we spoke too much about different stuff. So <laughs> when you can remain as an outsider, as an outsider meaning a person not born in a particular country, um, and you have a lot to offer, and you have diversification, in, you know, um, innovation, fresh ideas, new opportunities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to be welcome. And sometimes what you offer is not accepted. So if it's not accepted by the people that are in power, then you need to work within the circle that accepts it and create a movement which will shake the cage and wake up the people at the top. I agree. I agree. I understand. Because it, it is your mindset, it is your vision, it is your drive your desire to accomplish whatever it is that you've come here to do. Because you need to become a part of the system to change the system. And you need to have support by people who agree with the vision that you put in place. Because if you have no following, you know, you can't succeed. You know, I so, certainly believe are you in this small circle. Are you with me? Okay. So you'll find, even if it's one person can influence a family, a community, a nation, and the planet. So if we get one person that makes a difference and chisels away and breaks one brick in the wall, yes, sure. we will eventually create such a movement and, and impact others. So if we impact one life a day, our life is worth something. Never give up on your dream. But it's very difficult when you come in as an outsider. And I agree with you, it's not about if you're a man or a woman. Because even when we speak about anti-cancer, why shouldn't you be pro-love? Yes, exactly. So your outer world is a reflection of your inner world, but you, you need to be so strong and you need to be doing what you're doing and you need to just keep going. Because when you come from a computer like here, where it was now dominant, Remember the word woman has the word men in it. We need to work together. It's not about if you're a man or a woman or you're, or, you, or you're old or you're young or you're rich or you're poor. There's no discrimination. There is no discrimination. Just keep going. It's education. It's, it's mindset change. It's influencing. It's impacting. So 
you, if you, if you open yourself enough, you'll find the people who will be attracted to you, to what you have to offer. And you'll create something. But it's not easy. It's not easy when you don't speak the language, when you don't have the same values. And you spoke about something very important earlier on, which is about in my, um, education. If it's not, you spoke about women coders, that it's not very common to find. But why has it not been instituted in the educational system from young? You know, because it's all from your childhood. I was in education, by the way. So it's, it's all from stem from then. So keep going, keep everyone. There's no noise here. Keep going, keep, keep pursuing what you want, keep reaching for your dreams, keep impacting one life at a time, and eventually there'll be a movement, there'll be a change. It's beautiful. And congratulations for all that you're doing and for the wonderful impact that you've already created and the difference that you're making. It's it's so inspiring, it's so wonderful. More people should be made aware of it. And you know, if everybody just speaks to one person a day and, and reflects what's been happening here. There'll be so much more um, positivity and, and greater impact in Cyprus itself. Because this little island is a place where you find yourself. You have to face yourself. I think we should do this. Yeah. I'm going to jump to the last question and we're going to finish and jump to the The last question that I have is very simple. What us men can do to create a, what us men can do to create awareness and balance this gender equality? What can we do? <laughs> I think it's so good. Thank you. We all discuss it's a thing that we all have to focus on. We all have to give credit. We all have to acknowledge, understand, create awareness. It's not a, it's not only man's responsibility. It's a whole community responsibility. Please don't subdivide it into yes. like what the men have to do, like what a person that has to do. Don't divide. Don't divide. Don't divide. Don't divide. Don't divide. And I, I really I don't like this subdivision, like men and women business. It's like the whole universe that we are interacting. And uh, we are interacting on different levels. So women business cannot work without men. You see, the women's meeting cannot be without you, like without four of you who are here who are supporting it. So that is that is the corporation, you know. So please just just be like this, just support us. Except.